you with anything. You're looking for a book? Well, you've come to the right place. Would you like me to assist you um, on your journey to finding the right book for you? Yeah? Great. Uh, well, my name is Lotta. Um, do you have any idea what you're looking for? So, is it that you want a particular book or do you maybe have a genre in mind that you would like to uh, read? Queer? Yeah, okay. We've got a huge collection of LGBTQ plus related books. Um, are there any ones that you've read so far and that you really liked? So I can maybe see what you're, what you're into reading wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's a classic. I've read that one as well. Yeah, uh, so what do you say? You just stay right here and I'm gonna go and collect some books that I think you might like. I'll be right back and then I can show you uh, all the books that we have here, okay? Great, I'll be right back. Okay, um, I've got quite the collection for you because I didn't know um, I, I couldn't decide on just one or two, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six books for you. Half of them I've read, half of them I have not read yet, but I think they're all fabulous, so I'm gonna show them all to you. Let me just put those down over here, and then we can go ahead and, yeah, just go through them. I'm starting with an absolute classic. I'm sure you've heard of this one. The Song of Achilles by Madeleine Miller. I have read this one just recently. I'm very late to the buzz. And I must say, uh, at the beginning it was a bit difficult for me to um, get into the story. But as I progressed, it just got better and better. And the last, I think I read the last 200 pages in one go. And this book has, I think, 350. Yeah. Would you like me to read you the blurb on the back side? Okay. So, um, with quotes from like newspapers or just what the book is about? Okay. So, Greece in the Age of Heroes. Our awkward young prince Patroclus has been exiled to the court of King Peleus. Despite their differences, Peleus' golden boy Achilles befriends the shamed prince. As they grow into young men, their bond blossoms into something deeper. Despite the displeasure of Achilles' mother, the sea goddess Thetis, <laughs> oh, it's a bit difficult to pronounce all those names, um, but when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, Achilles must go to war in distant Troy and fulfill his destiny. Quotes are just well full of praise. First one says, I finished it with my heart beating, it's brilliant, and so is she, meaning the author. What do you think? Oh, also the cover. I think the cover is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um I don't know, it's just it's simple but effective and I especially here yeah, and let me get this closer, I especially like uh, the arrow. Should I show you the next one? Great. The next one, and maybe you've heard of this one as well, is Red, White and Royal Blue. Maybe a little bit similar. I think over half of the books I've collected for you have royal themes of some sort. <laughs> if you're not into that, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, basically this one is about um, the son of America's president falling in love with the Prince of Wales. Yeah, um, maybe that was a little bit of a spoiler. No. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, let me read you the back side, okay? Um, yeah. What happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? Oh, wasn't a spoiler at all. Okay. When his mother became President of the United States, Alex Claremont Dias was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. Handsome, charismatic, genius, his image is pure millennial marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get hold of a photo involving an Alex slash Henry altercation, US slash British relations take a turn for the worse. Heads of family and state and other handlers devise a plan for damage control. Stage a truce between the two rivals. What at first begins as a fake, Instagrammable friendship grows deeper and more dangerous. Um, more dangerous than either Alex or Henry could have imagined. Soon Alex finds himself hurling into its secret romance with a surprisingly unstuffy Henry that could derail the presidential campaign and upend two nations. It raises the question, can love save the world after all? Where do we find the courage and the power to be the, the people we are meant to be? And how can we learn to let our true colors shine through? What do you say? Yeah, I'll admit it's a little bit cliche. Um, but I, um, I loved this book as well. I think it's a great book. Uh, I've read this one. <laughs> and uh, I think this was one of the first um, LGBT-related books that I read and I, I just, it has a special place in my heart so I can really recommend it to you yeah okay, let me show you the next one this is our first lesbian love story it's called Cinderella is Dead. I think it's among the lesser known um, LGBTQ plus books. It's the third one I've read out of the six. Um, and it's a little bit different. So it's, um, I would say, fantasy. You can't really compare it to Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. It's very different. It focuses more on one person and the story behind um, the way her work world works. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 200 years since Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Sophia knows the story though off by heart, because every girl has to recite it daily, from when she's tiny until the night she's sent to the royal ball for choosing. For the lives of those not chosen by a man at the ball are forfeit. But Sophia doesn't want to be chosen. She doesn't want to go to the ball at all. Not when she's afraid the girl she loves might be chosen too. Pushed beyond breaking by a society that denies everything she is, Sophia sets out on a journey that will remake her world into one where she gets to choose. Yeah, um, I think this um, a little bit of explaining is due because I was very confused at first. So in this book, Cinderella is real. The fairy tale is real. Um, so it's they live in the fairy tale world where um, Cinderella happened, and what happens is at the age of I don't want to say too much, but at the age of at a certain age, all girls have to go to a ball and. They um, get selected by a man, and if they don't get selected, and they get, I think, th three chances, and if they don't get selected, then mm, screw them. And um, yeah, as it said on the back, Sophia is in love with another girl and doesn't want to be chosen, and doesn't doesn't want the other girl to be chosen either. So that's where the book starts, and I um, basically inhaled this. I think it took me one afternoon to read this. It's um, a little bit special. I think if you're not into fantasy, then you won't like this one. So, uh, 
Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think this is for everyone, but I personally loved it and I swallowed it whole. It didn't take me longer than 24 hours to read it because I was so absorbed into the story. Especially the second part. Yeah. It's um, quite this size. 380 pages approximately. And um, it's awesome. It's really awesome. It's my. Kaylin Bayron and uh, it's well, yeah also I think the cover is really pretty mm -hmm. yeah okay next one good so this one is the first one that I haven't read this one is called Her Royal Highness. Um, as I said, a lot of them have royal themes. This is the fourth book in a row. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but you did say that, yeah, you did say that you like that. So, um, as I said, I haven't read this one yet. I'm very eager to. I've got it at home. It's sitting in my sh on my shelf, waiting for me to read it. And um, this is a bit cliche as well. But because it's a lesbian love story, I think it's okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but when there are cliches in LGBTQ plus stories, it's always better than cliches in, um, well, straight stories. Yeah. Okay, the blurb. The blurb is such a word. Um, Millie Quint is devastated when she discovers that her sort of best friend slash sort of girlfriend has been kissing someone else. Heartbroken and ready for a change of pace, Millie decides to play for a scholarship at the boarding school in the rolling highlands of Scotland. The only problem, Millie's roommate, Flora, is a total princess. She is also the actual princess of Scotland. At first, the girls can't stand each other, but before Millie knows it, she has another sort of best friend, sort of girlfriend. Princess Flora could be a new chapter in her love life, but Millie knows the chances of happily ever after are slim. After all, real life isn't a fairy tale. Or is it? Yeah, as I said, a bit cliche. I think it's a little bit, sounds a little bit, I haven't read it, sounds a little bit like the girl version of red, white and royal blue. So I imagine it could be a little bit similar, just from the whole royal and you can't date them thing. What do you say? Um, yeah, the cover isn't like spectacular or anything, um, nonetheless. I think it's worth a look, I think it's pretty. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna show you the next one. So, before I tell you anything else, look at the beauty of this book. Look at the sheer beauty. <laughs> um, this is called The Henna Wars by Adiva Jaikirta. Yeah. I um, sure hope I pronounced her name right. I tried my best. And um, I haven't read this one either, but I've got it at home and I've read the first 20 pages so far. And I've been loving it. Um, let me read in the back. Nishat's parents say she can be anyone she wants, as long as she isn't a lesbian. She doesn't want to lose her family, but she also doesn't want to hide who she is, which only gets harder once Flavia walks into her life. Beautiful and charismatic, Flavia takes Nishat's breath away. As their lives become tangled, they're caught up in a rivalry that gets in the way of any feelings they might have for each other. Can Nishat find a way to be true to herself and find love too? Yeah. Um, I bought this online and I read in the blurb online that basically the two girls both start to do henna at their school's Talent contest, small shop contest, I don't exactly remember. Um, the author is Muslim and she dedicated this book to queer brown girls. 
Let me show this to you. It's in the beginning, right here. Can you see that? Yeah. And, um, I don't know, I think it's just very good to read LGBTQ plus stories that aren't focused on white people and on white struggles. Um, um, it just adds a different perspective, which I really like. and. It also helps me personally to learn more about Bengali culture. Yeah. Okay, uh, I've got one more book for you. It's a bit different, but... Uh. So, I didn't know if you were into autobiographies or if you only read fiction. So I brought one with me. This is the autobiography One Life by and about Megan Rapinoe, who is a lesbian football player, soccer player. There isn't much more to say about this. It's an autobiography. And in the beginning it said that um, she was raised in a conservative small town in Northern California and then and this book she just reflects on her life. I haven't read this one yet. I'm planning on reading it. And it's um, after reading lots of fiction, I think it's interesting to have the perspective of a real person who went through struggles um, regarding her sexuality. And yeah, this is also kind of sports focused, obviously. <laughs> There are some photos in the middle of where she grew up and also of her playing football. Yeah, it's different than the other ones, but I figured I'd um, bring it and see if you liked it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah those are the six books that I've collected for you. Now, let's talk money. <laughs> I know, but um, I'm sure the price is... Uh, also criteria for buying it. This one is the most expensive. It's um wait, I'm sorry. Um yeah, twenty-seven dollars. Then uh, red, white and royal blue is seventeen dollars and the other four are ten dollars each. Yeah. Okay, so we had the song of Achilles um about and Patroclus. We had red, white and royal blue of the Prince of Wales and the oh, America's first son. We had uh, Cinderella's dad about the lesbian love story in the fairy tale world. We had her royal highness, um, girl goes to boarding school and meets princess. We had the henna wars mm -hmm. and this one. That one? Yeah, okay. I'm actually really excited. Um, as, yeah, as I said, I think it's nice to have a real person tell their story. Okay. Uh, is there a second one you would like to buy or this one only? Are you sure? That's a great choice. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, you can take your books. Then I'll just go to the register and um, actually I think my colleague is sitting at, at the front right now so you can just go up to her and pay for those books yeah that's very nice talking to you and if you're ever in need of more LGBTQ plus books you know where to find me <laughs>